Tonight, Hollywood wants to block at least some of the internet. France bans Uber Pop. And Google tests a buy now button to counter Amazon. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 235 for Monday, December 15th, 2014. This episode is brought to you by ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes hiring faster, easier, and cheaper. Post your job to over 50 job boards with just one click. Try ZipRecruiter for a free four-day trial right now at ZipRecruiter.com slash TN2. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash TN and number two. Hello, everyone. I'm Sarah Lane, and let's get right into the tech feed. Microsoft is getting big support in its efforts to block American authorities from seizing a customer's emails stored in Ireland. The case, as you might recall, we talked about this on TN2, involves a decision by Microsoft to defy a domestic search warrant that seeks emails stored in a Microsoft data center in Dublin. Microsoft says that the search warrant could be a dangerous precedent that's already leading to privacy concerns among customers. The organizations that are filing supporting briefs in this case include Apple, Amazon, Verizon, Fox News, National Public Radio, The Washington Post, CNN, and almost 24 other tech and media companies, as well as the American Civil Liberties Union and the United States Chamber of Commerce. And 35 computer scientists have also signed briefs in the case, which is being considered in New York by the United States Court of Appeals for the Second Circuit. Now, earlier this year, Microsoft tried and then failed to persuade a lower court to reverse a judge's decision to allow the search. A decision by the appeals court in the case isn't even expected until the summer or fall of 2015, after which the case may end up in the Supreme Court. Uber allows users to summon taxi services with smartphones, right? Well, Uber's Uber Pop arm links private drivers to passengers by allowing individuals to register their car on Uber and then transport other people. Today, France's Interior Ministry announced that the Uber Pop transport service, which is just Part of the Uber service will be banned in the country starting on January 1st to avoid unfair competition. This is after taxi drivers disrupted traffic into Paris in a protest earlier today. France's taxi drivers are highly regulated and they say Uber has hit their business unfairly because it's expanded so quickly without those same regulations. Authorities have also voiced concern that Uber Pop drivers may not have their acquired commercial vehicle insurance, although Uber argues that its drivers indeed have proper insurance and has contested the French government's decision. But Uber's got Germany on its side, or rather Munich-based company Carpooling, which was previously known as carpooling.com. That service is launching in the United States after securing a deal with Uber. Carpooling specializes in mid to long distance ride sharing, so it's a different model. It's backed by car maker Daimler and early bird venture capital. And the carpooling app would let a passenger search for rides anywhere in the United States and then enable drivers to post available car seats, if they have any, and if they're headed in the same direction as their potential clients. So through a product integration with Uber, Carpooling says it'll be the first company to offer a door to door long distance service in the US. Passengers can request to be picked up at home by an Uber driver, then would take them to the starting point of the big long carpool ride, and then they could request an Uber at their arrival point to take them to their exact destination from within Carpooling's app. I don't know, carpooling from San Francisco to Los Angeles, it'd be nice not to drive, right? Maybe I'll try it out. The Guardians of Peace, which is a group claiming responsibility for the major hacking attack against Sony Pictures Entertainment, has offered to selectively hold back on releasing email correspondence of its employees if they write in and ask. The announcement, which was posted today on Pastebin and Friend Paste, reads, quote, Message to SPE staffers, that's Sony Pictures Entertainment, we have a plan to release emails and privacy of the Sony Pictures employees. If you don't want your privacy to be released, tell us your name and business title to take off your data. Now, Sony disclosed on November 24th that an attack had crippled its internal corporate network. Unreleased Sony movies have since been leaked. Emails between executives have been published. Data about inter internal company plans, business strategies, salaries, lots of confidential information has gone online. The Guardians of Peace have referred to a movie of terror and have demanded that that movie not be released. This is widely thought to be a reference to an actual movie called The Interview, which is a forthcoming comedy depicting an assassination attempt against North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. 
Okay, now for something completely different, but not really because it's about, you know, movie studios and them not liking the internet. And to tell us more about what's the latest is Russell Branham, reporter over at The Verge. Hey, Russell. Hi, Sarah. Thanks for being on the show. So on Friday, we actually covered this whole Project Goliath story, which was basically the internal name at, at Sony when uh, executives wanted to talk about how Google was disrupting their industry, right? So yeah, what is the latest with, 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 with what studios might want and, and be planning? Yeah, so I mean, the puzzling thing is actually they, they keep wanting the same thing sort of all the way back to SOPA and PIPA and sort of the stuff before that. They sort of want to be able to... St- they want to be able to block sites. If mm-hmm. they find, you know, the copy of 22 Jump Street on the internet and, you know, they want to be able to say, listen, don't send that traffic over these borders. ISP, stop serving that. Um, and this was a big part of the SOPA and PIPA fight. And what we're finding is that, you know, years later, they're still basically focused on that as the way that they're going to stop pri- uh, piracy. And that's gotten them in a lot of trouble with Google because I think, you know, Google and other web companies, but especially Google, really see that as sort of the beginning of the end of the internet and are fighting really hard. And that's why you see things like Project Goliath where they say, look, if we're going to stop piracy, enemy number one is, you know, this incredibly company, uh, this incredibly powerful company that we can't even name. (laughs) But I mean, movie studios have in the past been successful taking down uh, links to to sites and and places where you can get uh, what is copyrighted material that the that the MPAA and studios can can claim to have ownership of. So, what? Understandably, Google is in a different kind of business than the studios, and there is some pushback because, of course, yeah, you don't want to just turn into this sort of closed down internet that 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 doesn't work as a as a free place that, for the most part, we know of it today. So yeah. what what isn't Google doing? Is it is it because the process is too cumbersome for a studio to 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 break a link to something that 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 they can claim is 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 copyright infringement? What is Google not doing specifically? Yeah, I mean, it's a real puzzle. I think I think that the MPA is frustrated with sort of the I I guess they wish the process were faster of taking things off Google. I think, you know, you see, and again, this is leaked information that believed to be from from Sony servers, but you see these back and forths where they'll say, you know, I Googled, and in fact, 22 Jump Street is the example that they use, where they say, I Googled it, and, you know, within the first three pages, I found, you know, five different places where I could download this movie. How can, why isn't Google running this, these tests and sort of squashing these things as soon as they pop up? Oh, and of course, Google says, well, that's not really our job. You know, if you want to, yeah. you, you want to give, give us a complaint, we will, uh, you know, we'll look into it and, and see who's lying type of a thing. So I guess, as you mentioned a couple minutes ago, it's like, this is sort of the same tactic that's been going on for a while. So if I asked you, well, what should the MPAA <laughs> be doing instead? Because this seems like a battle that they're not really gaining much control over. I mean, what, what's the other yeah. tactic here? Because sure, copyright infringement is is illegal. It's it, They do have a point, don't yeah. they? Yeah, it's true. And box office revenue is down. I mean, that's one of the reasons why they're so concerned about this. So I think, but one of the interesting things that you see in the leaked data is there's a lot of one one example, for instance, someone had an idea of, oh, okay, everyone's watch, everyone wants to watch the new uh, NBC show Hannibal. What if we fake leaked an episode that was really a promo, sort of an ad for the next episode? People would download it, they'd see the ad, and the ad would point them to where they could watch it legally. Um, and, you know, in theory, this could have been a great advertising opportunity for the studio, but... Word comes down, they say, listen, we can't engage with the torrent sites at all. We can't advertise on them. We can't sort of put fake torrents on them. We can't put promos on them. Because the second we do that, it undermines our case that there's nothing but piracy going on on these sites. And the only remedy is to block them off the internet entirely. Mm -hmm. As soon as you start engaging with them, it, it weakens that. But then the result is they're choosing site blocking over 
more effective incremental measures that could probably, at least in the short term, do a lot more to, to sort of spur legal interactions with this content, whether that's people buying movie tickets or people, you know, tuning into a show that's on network television. So what is your best guess of what happens next? Besides the fact that we all have uh, quite, uh, you know, it, it's, it's it, a much closer eye into what happens behind the scenes at Sony Pictures Entertainment and, and, and what yeah. some of the, the top dogs there talk about. Hey, besides, oh, hey, that's so funny. They're calling Google Goliath and we all can yeah. pretty much tell what what company that was. <laughs> you know, what's, you know, what, what do you think comes of this? Well, I mean, I think this is a new regime at the MPAA. At the beginning of the year, or actually the very end of last year, they brought on uh, General Counsel Stevens Fabrizio, who had been behind some of the successful takedowns of international file sharing sites like IsoHunt. And I think that's their big bet as to we're, we're going to get site blocking. You know, we're going to be tough on piracy and take these people down. Now, I don't know. I mean, right now, I was shocked at how little they've taken away from the last three years, how little they took away from the SOPA fight how much they're still committed to that. Um, I, it doesn't seem like a winning hand to me either. I, I think they would probably see it differently. But I think, you know, at some point, either they're going to give up or the Google side's going to give up. I mean, I know which one my bets are on. <laughs> but you can say. <laughs> Russell Brandom writes for The Verge, reports for The Verge. Thanks so much for joining us, Russell. Uh, we've been uh, breathlessly covering a lot of your work well, <laughs> over the last, oh, I don't know, 72 hours or so. Before we let you go, remind folks where they can keep up with your work. Yes, theverge.com. Yes, ma'am. All right. Well, that's an easy one. Thanks so much. <laughs> Have a good one. You too. Have a good week. Coming up, Google is testing one-click shopping, and HBO Go is coming to yet another streaming device, and it might be one that's in your living room or your bedroom or wherever you watch TV. But first... Are you hiring? I hope so, because that probably means that things are going well at your company. But you want to get the right people into the cool desks at your job, right? You want the best candidates. ZipRecruiter not only lets you post to over 50 job boards, but they also maintain a resume database, a big, well-stocked one. You can search over 4 million resumes with thousands of new ones that are added daily. Thousands daily. You don't even have to search every day, though. ZipRecruiter will send your resume alerts when new candidates match your search. You can say, all right, this is the person I'm looking for. And then you get pinged when the good people arrive. Find candidates in various cities, various industries all across the U.S. Just post once and watch those qualified candidates roll into ZipRecruiter's easy-to-use interface. When you have a potential candidate or even a few of them, ZipRecruiter makes it easy to review. You can find out today why ZipRecruiter has been used by over 250,000 businesses. And right now, viewers and listeners of TN2 can try ZipRecruiter for a free, completely free four-day trial. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash TN2. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash TN2. We thank ZipRecruiter for their support of Tech News Tonight, and I hope you find a really good candidate and you hire them using ZipRecruiter. And if you do, let us know. On to a few more stories that we're following today. Google is enhancing its Google shopping service to challenge Amazon perhaps more than ever. Sources tell the Wall Street Journal that Google has approached retailers about creating a buy button for online shopping sites that would be similar to Amazon's one-click ordering feature, which is pretty popular. Until now, Google Shopping just refers shoppers to merchants' websites via links in search results. Now, this move comes as Amazon has increased its own efforts to get in on Google's search advertising business. So I can see why Google would want to take a page from Amazon's book as well. Now, separately, Google's also considering a marketing program that would let merchants promote two-day shipping for products purchased through its shopping service. This is a according to a person briefed on the plan, speaking to the journal. The program would resemble ShopRunner. ShopRunner, if you're not familiar, offers unlimited two-day shipping from retailers like Neiman Marcus or Toys R Us for a $79 annual fee. Skype demoed its new real-time translation software earlier this year. It looked really cool. Today, the tool is finally going live. The Skype Translator Preview program has begun letting people in based on signups to the Translator Preview page that went up in November. The Skype Translator project offers on-the-fly translation of spoken and written languages for participants that are using Skype for conversations, which makes it basically possible for two people 
who do not speak the same language to communicate freely. The preview program starts with support for English and Spanish spoken translation, as well as over 40 languages for real-time text chat. Right now, though, the tool is limited to users of Windows 8.1 software, either on desktop or via mobile. Today, Amazon and HBO announced that the HBO Go streaming app, also very popular, is coming to the Fire TV set-top box and the Fire TV stick. However, both Comcast and Charter Cable are blocking HBO Go for their subscribers who use Amazon's Fire TV products. HBO is also planning on offering its programming as a cable-free streaming subscription sometime next year. We don't exactly know what that'll look like or how much it'll cost, but the company says it's going forward. HBO Go hit the Fire TV set-top box today, and it'll come to the Fire TV stick in the spring, says the company. Finally, Facebook wants to be friendlier and more empathetic. You know, it just wants to be nicer and understand us as people and has decided not to call us users anymore. In fact, now we're just going to be called people internally. The company also has put together an empathy team, which is responsible for helping its engineers and designers understand what it's like to be a user. <clears throat> I mean, a person or a business that's paying for advertising on Facebook. Facebook's director of product design, Margaret Gould Stewart, says that Facebook has even redesigned all its internal dashboards, which used to say things like, daily average users, but now say daily average people. The Empathy team also plans to visit partners like small businesses or large advertisers to help them run their ad campaigns and find out more about their companies and goals. Corporations are people, and so are us users. I mean people. I don't know. That's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Hope you had fun. Happy Monday. Subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. You can write feedback at TN2 at twit.tv and watch live every weekday, Monday through Friday, 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Tech News Today airs tomorrow and every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. Hope you can catch it. I'm Sarah Lane, and thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by cashfly.com. Hi, this is Leo Laporte, and if you'd like to help us design our new website, I invite you to visit twit.to slash navtest. We've got eight quick questions we'd like to ask you that will help us make the navigation easier to use. That's twit.to slash navtest. Thanks a lot.